Hello and welcome back to episode 3 of the Compact E46 M3-ish build. It's not getting an M3 engine, so it's just got the normal little 3 litre. So where I left you last time was, yeah, we're putting on the front end, put the bonnet on, put the M3, well it's a genuine M3 bonnet, it's a genuine M3 bumper on it as well. So we've now got the panels from Miles Moyer, he is down kind of Glasgow way. Uh, his dad owns a body shop and he changed uh, E46 Compact like this one. He changed it basically, took an M3 and put everything onto it. Uh, and that was like the engine and everything. But he made the over fenders to kind of go with this. So it's just basically bolt on it. It's like the easiest thing ever. So yeah, let's have a look at this thing. I've got one side done and now I'll show you the other side, show you the differences, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> okay, so here's the car here. Um, we've got some nice new wheels. We can show you that first. These are Bola B4s. Um, the spec on this wheel right here is ET35 uh, uh, and it's an 18 by 9J wheel and it's got the dish on it and then the back is uh, the same dish and everything. It's an 18 by 9 still but uh, the ET is 20, but the wheel comes like with an ET20, so we've put a 30mm spacer to get it all the way out to the M3 uh, arch. A wee bit of stretch on the tyre, so I could come out a bit further if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good like that. So this is the back over fender from Miles. Um, he's pretty much took the M3 thing, but it kind of all all really goes nicely with the whole bodywork and everything and uh, the whole lines and everything it's all the same all the lines here it's all the same i still need to cut out where the flap goes but uh, yeah that's the back one let's have a look at the front one this is the front one here uh, he did have a space for the m3 part to go but I i'm not doing that because i've not got an m3 engine so i know i've got an m3 body but you know, bear with me, bear with me. I just like the wide arches, that's what I like. So yeah, I put in the little tab there as well. Miles didn't do that on his one, but uh, I just think it uh, makes it look a little bit more stockish. Um, so yeah, let's uh, talk about what we need to do this job. Oh yeah, and this is the stock side. So we've got the stock back arch, what's terrible with rust, that'll be getting cut out. And then you've got your front fender that doesn't really fit with the bonnet. You could make it fit if you wanted, but I wanted rid of the round headlights. You can see here, this doesn't fit with the coupe headlights. And also the bumper is miles and miles away. So yeah, let's talk about this. All right, so first we'll need is Miles's kit, body kit. Uh, this comes in about, I think it's, let me turn off my phone. Okay, so here's Miles's kit. This is what you would get from him. I will, in the description, I will link in his uh, Instagram and all you need to do is message him. I'm pretty sure that this kit here for two, two wings and two rear quarters is £380, I think. But you also need to get postage on top of that. Um, so yeah, you can see where the M3 logo is meant to go. Uh, I filled all this in just with P40 fiberglass filler. So yeah, uh, and I also had to trim this one here. This was quite big, so yeah, you just have to trim that to make it fit your lights. Not really anything we have to do to this one. This just comes out mold brilliant. Got the B4 wheel. That's a rear one, it's ET20. We've got a 30 mil spacer, and then we've got the rib nut tool and some rib nuts. Rib nuts are these things, so they get squished. They're like pop rivets, but they give you a thread. And then we've got the uh, the little uh, the little thingies. I don't know where they are, but I'll put a link in the description for these and the rib nuts in the description as well. So yeah, let's. Uh, get bolting this onto the car. You can see the stock fitment of the wheels as well. It's pushed out. That's only because I've got the modified arm. So if you're doing this yourself, 
don't expect to be ET35 on the actual wheel. You might have to run a spacer to get it out, basically like the back, because the back is stock. You can see how much the wheel is in stock. Uh, let's have a look. You know, it's in quite a lot there. So I would have said that's a good, that's a good 30 mil anyway. Um, so I don't know what offset these wheels will be, but I'm guessing they'll be like ET45 or 50, something like that. And they're 18 by 8J, I think. So yeah, you just need to figure out your fitments, but basically the back is standard. So I've got ET20 wheels with 30 mil spacer. So that will be plus 10 offset. Uh, if if you've got an 18 by 9J wheel. All right, or you can get the same as me, that's Bola B4s. Now I would like to show you these as well. Um, if you can kind of see it, see that off there. See this bit here? It lines up with the hole here. <coughs> uh, so that's really good. So um, let's try and lift this in to place somewhere. Oh, yeah. So this one here, there's a hole, there's a hole here, I can't see that, oh, this is the channel, right, so there's a hole here, here that you can't actually see, same with this one, but this one here lines up with there, so that's good, so we can drill that and then we'll just take a pen and just mark mark here and then we'll mark it up on here and then we we'll roughly know it's somewhere here it doesn't need to be perfect as long as you got it on same here we'll mark it here and then mark it up there and then we can drill i've already got one here that's drilled it might be okay but yeah and um, let's get this one on first okay so one thing about spacers is this is a 30 mil spacer some some people will probably say oh don't run spacers don't run spacers but if you actually get a good spacer, there's nothing wrong with it. It does put a little bit more stress on the actual wheel bearing itself, you know, because you're stancing the wheel out further. But even if you have mega offset wheels, it's the same thing. But yeah, just make sure you've actually got the center part. This actually centers your wheel and holds the, uh, you know, just basically holds it center and stuff like that and just takes a bit of the load off the uh, studs itself uh, and then just lock tight these studs they they go on this hole here um, and then into here so yeah just uh just make sure that you lock tight the studs get these studs off of here and then i'll lock tight them into here so yeah and then that'll be the spacer on Okay, so this is the rear arch pretty much in place where I kind of want it. I've got to do a little bit of trimming here and also at the front to match. This one's flush here um, and on the other side um, it comes in slightly so I'll just need to chop a little bit off there. The front wings are okay. Um, I need to fill in fill in this bit again and it's just it's got a good... A good gap here so I'm just gonna fill that in with a fiberglass filler as well and um, I'll show you what it is I've got so this stuff here uh, fiberglass hole filler p40 it's uh, nine pounds and I've also got just the paste uh, and that's eight pounds and that shafts that I broke on the, the Jay-Z forget about that um, so yeah I'll get 
I'll get this mounted up so now I can just drill all the holes and stuff wherever I want them. You can do them wherever you want if you've got the same kit. Uh, I'm just going to randomly put them places where I think it's going to look good and where it's going to hold. Uh, I can show you this side. So I just need to match it to this one where I've put the fasteners. You can see where I've done it. So I'll do the same on the other side. Cut this out as well, but yeah, pretty much good to go. This side's the same. It must just be the mould that uh, he's got, but I'll just fill this in a wee bit better so it's the same as this. This one's not as bad, um, but yeah, I filled in this. It's smooth there. Maybe just need to sand that a little bit more. I'm going to fill in a little bit more here. There's a bit of a gap. So fill in that and uh, yeah, she's good to go. I need to like just massage this in a little bit as well. I think I'll just use some filler in here, fill that, and it's the same on the other side as well. Um, once the light gets pushed in, uh, I'll just fill in that a little bit more and lift up this bumper because it's all loose. So getting there, getting there. Let's 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 uh, get it all back together. Okay, so next job is cutting this arch. Uh, I'm pretty much, where's the biggest point? Pretty much taking an inch out of the top here and then we're just coming down. So if we, let's drop that. So if we go off of this, I'm slightly lower. So I'm just starting to ramp it up here and coming along. This is just a rough guess. I'm just feeling in behind where the skin is and stuff because I kind of want to cut this outer skin and then weld this inner skin onto this one. So I just really want to cut that off and then I'll pinch it all together and weld it all and seal it all up. And then we've got plenty of clearance for the wheel to go up and down. Okay, so this has been in the shed for a wee while now. Um, it's getting late. Uh, I put the fiberglass on, so I'll switch this camera around and I'll show you what I've kind of done. If you haven't seen it on the time lapse. So fiberglass is here filled in a good bit in there and I filled in down there I did the same on this side down here just filled in a little gap there I forgot to do these bits but they can wait uh, and then over here got all the rev nuts in stuff like that and then I've cut out part of the arch here you can see and then I've just uh, took the grinder to it so it's ready for welding so what I'll do is I'll pull on that and then push on that and weld the two together and just keep doing loads and loads of little welds and put it all back together and then I'll cut along here, cut all that off, put everything back on, boom, wide body.